Gonna change the theme tune cause you hate it. La la, la 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 la, ooh, fading. Hello people of YouTube. Uh, I've not made a video in a little while. Purely because I'm just trying to avoid all the kind of ridiculous drama that's been going on in this little particular corner of the internet. Um, so I decided after kind of reading, you know, reading, watching some videos by channels that make that do reviews of books, that maybe I'd talk about some books I'd like just for a change of pace. Um, and I'm going to go very quickly over the books I've read during the last year, just and tell you what I thought of them. <clears throat> I started last year. Uh, going over, well, just really going back to 2012-13. Uh, I ended 2012 into 12, 2013 with reading the Mars Trilogy by Kim Stanley Robinson. Um, it's very, very long. Uh, but it's one of those trilogies that once you get your head around it and get into it, get past the slowness of really the first few hundred pages of the first novel, you kind of want it to keep on going. And by the time I'd got to the end of it, Having lived with these characters for about six months whilst reading these books, I kind of didn't want it to end, uh, which is a shame because it does. But um, you get so sucked into the whole thing. And for anybody who's not read it, it's it's a very long story that spans several hundred years, talking about um, terraforming Mars. It starts out with the first uh, <coughs> colonies being set up, um, goes right through to the point where the planet's got a an atmosphere and plants and oceans and all this kind of stuff uh, follow some of the same characters all the way through because at some point in the novels they work out how to make people live for a lot longer uh, it's very very good kim stanley robinson's way of dealing with the science is to take a far more realistic view of it so none of it seems particularly far-fetched and it does make you kind of want to live on mars um, so after that, I, I went into a very short book. I read The End Specialist by Drew McGarry. The End Specialist... Now, you will notice the theme with all these books. They're all kind of sci-fi. But um, The End Specialist is, again, about what happens if people live forever. Um, in it, there's the cure for ageing is developed. <clears throat> and it's written in the form of a kind of journal by this guy. Uh, and really, if you think that living forever would be a good idea read the end specialists and you will get to the end of it and you will think this is a terrible idea maybe give everybody an extra couple of hundred years but forever no it doesn't end well the next thing i read was the curve of the earth which is by simon morden it's the latest in the uh, petrovich series by him it's a post-apocalyptic thing um really the the Kind of post-apocalyptic element of it now is starting to get less because as the time is passing within the books world it's getting further from uh, armageddon which was caused by religious fundamentalists trying to bring about the end of the world it's very very good the series uh it's worth starting with the free ebook called thy kingdom come which was written kind of well before it all, and some of the characters are slightly different in that. But it gives a lot of background to them. Uh, but it also gives a background to what happened. And again, it's, it's quite a kind of horrifying view of the future. Uh, Curve of the Earth is a good one. Um, I'm not going to spoiler it, It's but it's worth reading. Next one I read, though, was uh, James S.A. Corey, uh, Abaddon's Gate, which was number three in the Expanse series. Uh, that surrounds what happens when humanity discovers a portal out of the galaxy, out of their, out of the solar system, sitting at the edge of the solar system. Uh, it's like a gateway thing, and they go in, and it's uh, it's a whole unholy mess. You really have to have unread, unread. You really have to have read the previous books to understand what the fuck's going on with it. The book's very good, but is part of a series, uh, and I read the next part a bit later on. Uh, the Execution Channel by Ken McLeod was the next thing I took a go at. Uh, Ken McLeod I read because uh, I'd heard good things about him. He was spoken very highly of by Ian Banks. Um, the book itself is an odd one. It kind of seems to finish somewhat abruptly, and uh, yeah, it's. I'm not sure what to think of that one. Uh, so I'm not going to go into that too much. So the next thing I tried to read was Pollen by Jeff Noon. Now, I'd really enjoyed Vert when I read that a few years ago, and my wife had been recommending Pollen. Uh, couldn't get into it at all. Uh, the same elements that were in Vert are in Pollen, 
But for this time, for me, they just didn't click. I think I wasn't in the right place for reading it. So I'll give it a go at another time. Uh, so then I tried Making History by Stephen Fry. I really enjoyed this. Um, the only thing I thought was a little bit kind of tacked on was the uh, sudden change of sexuality. Uh, I'm not going to say anything more about that, but the rest of it is really good. The premise is great. Uh, it's most enjoyable. Uh, a whole story about what happens if you went back in time and stopped Hitler. Uh, again, you do that, things don't go well. Uh, the short version is somebody worse than Hitler gets in. Uh, <clears throat> Equoid, Charles Stross, uh, a novella from the Laundry series. Excellent stuff again. Uh, it is fucking gruesome. It is this proper H.P. Lovecraft-esque horror. Uh enjoyable for it some really unpleasant Im imagery in there you'll like it if you like the, the gory stuff uh worth reading the rest of the the series though to get a lot of the background on that the next thing i read was uh, ned bowman's uh, the teleportation accident a lot of people kind of criticized it on goodreads i really enjoyed this uh, i thought it was funny i thought the central character was gloriously uh out of touch with what was going on. It was so completely self-centred, the central character is, that he almost doesn't notice World War II happening. He's so obsessed with his own life. Uh, I think it's genius. And it does... It has got a sci-fi element to it. Uh, but that's very minor in the whole story. But I, I really enjoyed the teleportation accident by Ned Beaumont. Uh, Christian Nation by uh, Frederick Rich. It's very good. Uh, again kind of finishes a bit before you want it to it you kind of want to know what happens next which i suppose is a good thing but it is quite realistic uh, <clears throat> in the way it presents what possibly could happen now i am reading these off my goodreads by the way um horishi i'm going to try and pronounce this correctly horishi saku oh, shit horishi hiroshi sakurazaka all you need is kill uh, this is the book that The Edge of Tomorrow, the Tom Cruise film, is based on. The book is fantastic. I really like this. Uh, it's short, punchy, to the point. A really nice kind of Groundhog Day with big axes uh, and weird bugs made out of sand. Very, very good. Uh, after that, I was still on a fairly short kind of book tap. Uh, so I went for The Churn, which is another James S.A. Corey. It's still an expanse novella. It's set before everything that's happened in the, the current novels and gives a bit more background about one of the main characters. I liked this, uh, and I think it gives a lot more detail for the character, which I'm not going to name because it spoils it. It gives a lot more detail to one of the main characters and makes you appreciate a lot where he's coming from. Uh, I followed that with The Drowned World by J.G. Ballard. Beautiful imagery in this. Really nice descriptions of uh, London overwhelmed by tropical forests and extreme heat. Uh, really good book. Um, <clears throat> it's It's been around for a while, obviously. Uh, BBC did a recent adaptation of it on Radio 4, uh, which made a few changes, which were a bit odd. But overall, I, it's, yeah, it's one of those books that kind of sticks with you. Uh, almost at the end now. Uh, Cibola Byrne. Now that was the latest James S.A. Corey. Uh, really about what happens when mankind goes through the gateway at the edge of the solar system and starts colonising the worlds out there. Uh, things go a bit wrong. Uh, the thing that's quite good about it is that the way these guys are writing, because it's two guys, uh, Ty Frank and somebody else, I can never remember the other guy's name, uh, the way they're writing <coughs> is starting to kind of almost reach the levels of Ian Banks with his drawing everything together into a big clusterfuck. Um, Banks was, to my mind, absolutely the best at doing this. He wrote these books where you'd have several different characters in different places and gradually they'd get drawn together into some kind of colossal ending which no one else could write like Ian Banks. Um, if you want a good example of that, go and read The Hydrogen Sonata, his last culture novel. It just draws together beautifully into this apocalyptic ending. Um, Sabola Byrne almost gets there. The the writers have started to reach the point where they possibly could be writing stuff that's as good as Banks at some point in the future. Uh, then 
the thing I've just finished is the Rhesus chart by Charles Stross. Charles Stross as well is reaching a point where he could in the future take the mantle of Ian Banks for that kind of writing. Uh, the Rhesus chart is the latest Laundry Files one. It's the ones with Bob Howard who works for uh, the Laundry, which is a secret uh, UK government organisation. Uh, basically civil services who are in dealing with uh, arcane horrors from the other dimensions. Um, this one's about vampires. It's very good. The previous ones have been uh, what, we, what we had. We have had zombies. We've had uh, a James Bond style one. We've had religious fundamentalists trying to accidentally summon some god from uh, some awful dimension. It's all good stuff. The, the Laundry series is very funny. It's very clever. This one is less funny than the others because it's getting nearer to the um, I think it's Case Nightmare Green, which is the code name they have for the end of the world. And obviously the story is now ten years into the series. Uh, you know, ten years since the first novel. And this end of the world is getting nearer and nearer, so the books are, the tone's slightly changing in them. And then, at the moment, I'm reading The Hot Zone. Uh, I can't even remember who wrote it. Uh, my wife recommended it to me. Uh, I can probably tell you who wrote it. Hold on. That would probably be helpful, wouldn't it? Uh, Richard Preston uh, I'm reading that because it has some nice mirrors with what's going on in the world at the moment so anyway that's been my last couple of years in books uh, there's been some really good stuff there I'd recommend a lot of this if you want to go and read my lists go and have a look at uh, Goodreads look up Alex Botton uh, I'll put a link to it in the thing below and you can see what i've been reading what i've thought of things but yeah um, there you go something a bit more positive and different for a change uh and also i have a new tattoo now this tattoo which is actually that way up so i can read it it is it is the geekiest tattoo in the world it is my ian banks tribute tattoo it is in circular gallifreyan geek central and it says accession which is the name of one of um, Ian Banks culture novels and one of my favourite books of all time uh, so yeah that's for Ian Banks and I still haven't read his final novel uh, The Quarry I kind of can't bring myself to do it because I know that it's the last and if, if when I finish that there's nothing more so I kind of am leaving that one for now even though I want to read it but I'm sure there's plenty of other people like that out there anyway thanks for watching